Right, hello YouTube. Bit of a different sort of video for you today. Um, in a recent load of stuff I got from eBay, I got a couple of these. Now these are rather nice ceramic hybrids. Uh, 1S44. These are Synchro Resolver to digital converters. Right, now a Synchro Resolver is slightly different from a normal Synchro. Um, a normal Synchro will have uh, one input, one AC input, and uh, typically three outputs. Um, a, uh, a synchro resolver will have um, two outputs, a sine and a cosine. Um, they're, they're fairly commonly used in industry, all sorts of things. Um, I had a couple of them sitting around in my box of things that go round that I'd taken out of uh, uh, bits of avionics. Um, now this one, if I just zoom in on it, um, there we go, so you have R and S, and R is input and S is output. Um, we've actually got two R windings here, that, that doesn't make any difference, I'm only using one of them. Um, and uh, we have the two S windings which give you the sine and cosine outputs. So I thought I'd play around with these converters and uh, see what they can do. And in the process uh, use some of the uh, rather ancient and venerable test gear I've got. So I'll just uh, walk you through the setup I've got. Up here, this is an old HP signal generator. It's generating about a 2 kilohertz sine wave. Sine wave comes down here. Um, this needs a reference, so it goes in there, and it also goes off to this synchro resolver here. This is just a bit of a uh, an ADF thing that I took apart. Um, I'm just using it because it's got the uh, degrees scale on it, so it's kind of nice to... Uh, to look at the actual angle that it is turning at. Here we have my Weigel, and you can see the 2 kilohertz sine wave here, and the two signals here, the signals coming out of the uh, out of the resolver. So as I turn this, you can see that they uh, they vary relative to each other. Now, um, this confused me at first because the sine cosine uh, outputs are uh, are supposed to be uh, out of phase. Um, that's how uh, that's how you can derive the uh, the, the, the the absolute position of the uh, resolver by uh, by doing some maths on them. And these you can see are in phase. But of course, this is uh, this is a trick. This is the carrier wave, if you like, that the carrier signal. Um, because because these resolvers are inductive devices, they're basically a fancy rotary transformer. They need AC to get through them. Um, and so yeah, that's what this is. Um, so you turn that, and you can see. Well, yeah, they're changing. But if you turn them, if I turn the the time base uh, down here to make them uh, to make it like uh, to make it look like that. So if I so if I turn the time base right down here, and then turn it, if I turn it fast enough. There we go, that's a bit easier to see. So as I turn this, you can see that it is forming uh, two sine waves and uh, they are out of phase. Um, so, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the actual data that we're looking at. Um, the two kilohertz uh, sine wave behind all that is just, uh, just, just there to, to make the, the inductive nature of the resolver work. Right, yes, yeah, so down here we have the uh, the device itself on the bedboard, which you can't see for the mass of uh, for the mass of probes attached to it. So yeah, this this is just where the uh, the signals are monitored going in. That's that's the thing itself, and then we've got all these logic uh, uh, logic outputs going into the rather ancient HP logic analyzer. I don't know if that's really a logic analyzer. I don't think it deserves the term logic analyzer. Doesn't really do much analysis. Logic state analyzer, that's what it wants to be called. Uh, so if I just, yeah, there we go. Uh, actually, let me just put this on A. Uh, yeah, as I turn the, uh, the little resolver down here, you can see that it is counting up in binary. And it continues to do so um, until it overflows, which it actually does quite a lot because this is a 14 bit converter and I've only got uh, two 6 bit uh, pods for the the analyzer. Um, this, this takes three uh, three pods of six bits each. Um, so uh, yeah, it overflows when it gets to twelve bits. Um, so yeah, this uh, this thing needs a clock input to function and um, just to clock in the data. So I've got the uh, I've got the clock input here going uh, straight to the not busy output of the uh, the converter. So every time the converter finishes a conversion, um, the the clock pulse signals and this thing knows to uh, to update itself. Um, so yeah, there you go. 
I uh, hope that was uh, interesting, and uh, yeah, come again.